Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today. You may be wondering, uh, why do I have like a little furry co-pilot here today? I'm pet sitting, so he's gonna be joining me for a couple of videos because if I don't hold him like this, he's gonna start barking at the people coming in and out of the building. He's not supposed to be here, so on that. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we got a lot of Bethesda news to talk about because we're going to learn a little bit about Indiana Jones, Starfield's exclusivity, and much, much more like Elder Scrolls 6 updates. So there's plenty to talk about. Why is this all happening now? Because Microsoft is battling with the FTC in court as we speak. Certainly there will be multiple other updates for us to get into. So I'm very excited about all of that. I know he is too. He's just so, so enthused. So we have a lot to talk about today. And if you're new here, you're into Xbox or Bethesda news and information, consider subscribing. We're gonna be talking more about the Xbox side of things tomorrow as we're still waiting on more throughout this entire FTC case where undoubtedly a ton is going to spill out. But with that, let's begin at the top. I've always been keen to learn, hey, what is going on with Machine Games in Indiana Jones? There's been a lot of speculation. Will that game be Xbox exclusive or not? I have some thoughts, but first the news, which according to a headline here, Bethesda's Indiana Jones game is exclusive to Xbox and PC. The article reads, Bethesda's upcoming Indiana Jones game will be exclusive to Xbox and PC. Pete Hines, Bethesda's head of global publishing, confirmed the exclusivity during the FTC versus Microsoft case today. Indiana Jones will also be available day one on Xbox Game Pass, as to be expected with any first party studio. Hines was questioned as part of witness testimony in the FTC versus Microsoft hearing today, with the FTC's counsel revealing that Disney had a contract for multiple consoles and that the deal was amended after Microsoft's Bethesda acquisition to be just for Xbox consoles. When asked why Microsoft had changed Indiana Jones to an Xbox exclusive, Hines explained Bethesda liked the idea of removing the risk of game development and bringing it to Xbox Game Pass. The primary one, in my view, is what I said about reducing risk and trying to get a degree of certainty, said Hines. You're dealing with a licensor who's going to have a ton of feedback on what you're making and add a lot of time to your schedule. Now, I remember this was a, a major discussion for Xbox fans on whether this would or wouldn't be an Xbox exclusive. And I don't say this, by the way, to toot my own horn by any stretch of the imagination, but I was always kind of confused by that. I look at something like, of course, Spider-Man on PlayStation or now the upcoming Wolverine game being great examples of exclusive Disney IP uh, and they're super popular and honestly I think more popular than something like an Indiana Jones game well I'm very excited for the Indiana Jones game because growing up I love the Emperor's Tomb game we actually just talked about it over on Retro Rebound if anyone wants to go down memory lane over there with some of these Indiana Jones games timing is kind of funny on that but I love that one growing up the hand-to-hand -hand combat some of the gunplay even it was just a wild fun adventure it's actually the reason I became an Indiana Jones fan much like I became a Star Wars fan through Knights of the Republic Emperor's Tomb is this original story and I enjoyed it quite a bit so I have a lot of excitement for what Machine Games is cooking but I say all of that because there was a lot of people saying, no, you know, Indiana Jones is going to be multi-platform. And I get it because with Disney involved, you think, well, maybe they want the most exposure possible for this. But when Xbox has no answer to Spider-Man, no answer to Wolverine, you got to do something, I feel. And yes, even if Indiana Jones is the smallest of all of the pickings, I still think that's something to have something you can literally hang your hat on a bit and i think it's important for their ecosystem but there were a lot of people who didn't think so and i just never understood why because disney was fine giving spider-man which is i think the most popular comic book hero next to batman or superman in an exclusive capacity to playstation and so why couldn't xbox get indiana jones if anything it might create a little bit more buzz around it because it's a big exclusive project instead of this multi-platform release because We've learned a bit, there are some IP that aren't invincible. I think of Guardians of the Galaxy, which is still gaining popularity. A lot of people love the new Volume 3 movie and whatnot. Um, and that's all well and good, but the game didn't sell that well. And that might be just Marvel fatigue in general. Point being is that it doesn't mean that when you just grab an IP, it's automatically going to do well. You still have to think about how you want to present the product. And I think I've always been on the side of the fence that exclusivity creates a sense of importance for a game. And when it creates that importance, then a lot more people are going to be talking about it because it's not widely available. Maybe I'm galaxy braining it a bit, but that's how I've personally looked at it for a little bit. But that's what's going on with, I got to put this dog down. <laughs> that's what's going on with Indiana Jones. 
Um, now, we're going to take a look at Elder Scrolls 6. Elder Scrolls 6 is, guess what, five plus years away. It's crazy to think about, all right? Because before we even read the quotes from Phil Spencer, I was a junior in high school when this game came out. And the fact that I'm going to be in my early to mid 30s by the time this hits. Uh, yeah, I can't say that one was on my bingo card personally. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's read this IGN article and what Phil Spencer had to say. Xbox's Phil Spencer has confirmed that Elder Scrolls 6 is still five plus years away. The Xbox boss is still also being careful about mentioning which platforms the Skyrim sequel, I hate that, is planned for, saying it's difficult for us right now to nail down. There was some confusion surrounding the Elder Scrolls 6's potential exclusivity during the trial. As Spencer said previously in his deposition, I have made public statements that Elder Scrolls 6 will skip PlayStation, but he now says he does not recall doing this. Looking back to November 2021, Spencer certainly hinted that Elder Scrolls 6 would be an Xbox exclusive without explicitly saying it. At the time, Spencer said, quote, It's not about punishing any other platform like I fundamentally believe all of the platforms can continue to grow, but in order to be on Xbox, I want us to be able to bring the full, complete package of what we have, and that would be true when I think about Elder Scrolls 6. That would be when I think about any of our franchises. Now in court, Spencer spoke about the Elder Scrolls 6 release window and planned platform, saying it's many years away, but it's a game we have announced and we would begin working on. I think we've been a little unclear on what platforms it'll launch on given how far out the game is. It's difficult for us right now to nail down exactly what platforms that game will launch on. As I said with Elder Scrolls 6, it's so far out, it's hard to understand what platforms it will be even on at this point. It's the same team that's finishing Starfield, which comes out this September. So we're likely talking about it being five plus years away. A lot of people understood this as Xbox versus PlayStation exclusivity. And I think that is a part of it. But I really think this is more along the lines of like Elder Scrolls 6 being, I feel, a let's say whatever's after the Series X type of game. Like that's how I'm looking at it. Like we don't even know what systems it's going to be on. Um, I think it's in the, the realm of this could be a launch title for the next set of consoles, which I know we're getting really far ahead of ourselves. But don't worry, when we talk about Xbox directly tomorrow, we're already talking PlayStation 6 territory with some of these Activision games. So it's not necessarily something that we should avoid. That's my personal understanding of it. But yeah, seeing Elder Scrolls 6 five plus years away, that hurts because not only do I want to see what the next Elder Scrolls entry is going to be like, but then you think about Fallout, you think about the, all these other IP, and it just comes back to the same conversation that I've had multiple times on the channel that Bethesda really needs to figure out a good partner for spinoffs for all of their properties. Starfield included, by the way. Yes, they need to figure something out for that too, whether it's a support platform or something that can give us new experiences beyond the base game. Same with Fallout, same with Elder Scrolls. These are huge multi-million dollar IP. It's time to really start pumping some developers into them that are gonna bring some new ideas to the table and keep things alive. And no, when I say alive, I'm not talking live service I know it counts for the money, but when we we know the fans want a little bit more. I'm not just talking about Fallout. I feel bad for Elder Scrolls fans. You got ESO in 2014, Elder Scrolls Legends, and that was it. They're like, all right, see you. I'm like, what? Like, there's no way you're going to do like an RTS even? Like, Elder Scrolls RTS practically writes itself, for example, and so much more. There's so many ways they could go about it. I mean, of course, I've, I've gone ad nauseum on about how Fallout could get the same thing. So this is just another reminder to me that Xbox has some work to do on that front if it's going to be another half a decade when ugh, the last entry came out in 2011. I know we've got updates for Skyrim like the anniversary edition last year. That was a lot of fun. I thought it had some worthwhile content that you should check out if you have yet to. Uh, but the reality is that this is going to be an agonizing wait. And I do think it'll be on Xbox exclusively. Like, I don't know how Xbox wouldn't want to lock this down. And that's because I've been beating the drum for a lot of time now that I think Halo's kind of being the, we'll say, flagship Xbox IP will be a thing of the past soon. And that the front of the Xbox box in that new generation will be Elder Scrolls 6. I think that's one of the best selling points you can have for a console out the gate. And not just like, hey, Halo, remember remember this old man here? And I'd say as someone who did enjoy Infinite in its launch period, and of course, have the same issues people do 
uh, with the continued live service updates, but I just think Elder Scrolls 6 has to be Xbox exclusive if they want to continue to battle things back. Even if they've already said they lost the console wars, no doubt about it, this is still something they want to have to at least, I guess, stay within the console wars. So with that, we move on to our last subject here, where Microsoft heard Starfield might skip Xbox before buying Bethesda. This is one of those fun talking points where I feel like ultimately it's not crazy news because we already know how it went. Like they bought Bethesda, locked down Starfield exclusively. We know how all of that went. But at the same time, it gives you some insight into how aggressive Xbox got when they read the writing on the wall. And I'm gonna give them their flowers in a moment here because I think it was a really wise move when you look at the year they could have had versus the year they're going to have. So let's read a little bit here with an added scoop here on Todd Howard having some thoughts on PS5 exclusivity potentially. So they write here on Windows Central, as part of the hearing, FTC counsel cross-examined Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer, who testified that Microsoft heard Starfield was going to skip Xbox. Presumably this would have been part of a PS5 timed exclusivity deal, similar to the deal PlayStation signed with Arcane Leon's Deathloop and Tango Gameworks Ghostwire Tokyo. Now you may remember I talked about this in a previous video because Imran Khan did report this back in 2020, saying that Sony had been negotiating timed exclusivity for Starfield when Bethesda was purchased by Xbox. Then continuing on in the article, Spencer noted that hearing this discussion was taking place was part of the reason Microsoft decided to act and gain more first party content. Microsoft announced the acquisition of ZeniMax Media in September 2020, a deal that finalized in March 2021 for $8.1 billion adding Bethesda Game Studios and the rest of the ZeniMax media to Microsoft's first-party Xbox content. Then, the writer of this article also puts, I've heard from a couple of sources that one of the reasons a deal to sign Starfield as a PS5 console exclusive didn't pan out, or rather, wasn't reached before Microsoft reached a deal to buy ZeniMax media, was directly because of game director Todd Howard, who wasn't keen on the game having PS5 exclusivity. That last part is, is really interesting to hear, and I feel it makes a lot of sense when you look at Skyrim on PS3, you look at console mods on Fallout 4, you just look at some of the things there and how quickly in that console mod space, Bethesda threw PlayStation under the bus and why they couldn't give the same console mod experience that you'd find on Xbox over on PlayStation. And it makes sense why Todd would like to have Xbox as a partner over PlayStation. I've said it before that I really fear for a reality, this alternate world where Starfield would be PS5 exclusive. Now I know we haven't got the Xbox exclusive in Starfield, so we're not gonna put the cart before the horse here. Would we get the additional delays that Xbox seems to have given the game to at least get it to a much more polished level as we've seen in the Starfield Direct? That you could just throw a guess out there on. I can't imagine that the extra probably two years the game got would have been given by anyone else because especially if it's a timed exclusivity deal, they're just paying to have it on their platform, they being PlayStation, not to continue to fund the game and help it find its way. But also look, we you know it's gonna sound fanboyish, but we can't deny that Xbox and Bethesda before this acquisition had a great relationship. You know, Morrowind, Xbox exclusive, Oblivion, timed Xbox exclusive and, and so on and so forth, getting the Fallout DLC first for Fallout 3, if I remember correctly, and so on. I mean, that relationship has always been there, even with, honestly, prior leadership. So there's just a compatibility there, and I totally can see Todd having a preference. I mean, it's pretty obvious with the quality of the product on one platform versus the other, which is unfortunate to see, and I'm not really gonna excuse it. I don't think he's intentionally sinking one project, but. I don't think he has a fondness for PlayStation in the sense that uh, working with them as business partners. Now, with that said, I said I wanted to uh, tip my cap to Xbox and their leadership, and absolutely, the fact that they identified this, I mean, when you look at the hype for Starfield, that was almost worth the price of admission when you think about uh, creating excitement around the platform at a time they needed it most. Uh, what came with that was kind of the, the double-edged sword. You get a Redfall, which, I think from the outside looking in, that's not a bad investment. I know a lot of people are gonna say, what are you talking about? I mean, look, I trashed the game when I could review it. Y'all know that. But 
when you're looking from the outside before you see the final quality of the product, um, you're about three years out from launch at that point. You're hearing that the developer that made Prey is working on this vampire co-op game and they're trying out open world and Harvey Smith is helping direct it. I mean, it's a pretty safe bet to make. And then of course they're aware of things like Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, there's a lot there where when you think about Xbox's 2023 without Bethesda, yes, that includes even the L's like, like a Redfall. You would just have Minecraft Legends and Forza Motorsport this year. That's, that's, I mean, you know, Minecraft Legends, good game. Uh, Forza Motorsport looks good too. Uh, that would be one depressing year for Xbox. And uh, <laughs> I, I just think Bethesda getting them was so paramount to their success and some form of momentum here. So they, they sprung on the right partner there. I think it always made sense. But when you really look at what their year would be like without them, I think the writing is on the wall here that they made a really good call. And if Starfield pans out to be a massive success, like I think it'll be, uh, even doubly so. But again, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself with that kind of speculation. But ladies and gentlemen, that's what's going on with the Bethesda news. It's getting a little wild out here with this FTC case. So we got Indiana Jones exclusive. We know that Starfield almost skipped the platform for Xbox, which would have been a completely different reality for the product, it seems like. And then also Elder Scrolls 6, five plus years away. So much to talk about down below. Please fire away with your thoughts. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing them. With that, take excellent care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video. And consider supporting me on Patreon, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff linked down below. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.